نحمده ونصلي على رسول النبي الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إحدنا السراط المستقيم سراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قال الله تعالى في شأن حبيبي إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا مولانا محمد طب القلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها ونور الأبصار وديائها وعلى آله وصحبه دائما أبدا Salatu wa salamu alayka ya sayyidi ya rasulullah Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Inshallah continuing with our talk on our discussion on Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam You know and last time we had talked about when he had entered the jail and his discussion or his argument or the argument that he placed before uh, the two inmates who recognized good in him uh, and they asked him about the dream and so before he interpreted their dreams to them uh, he invited them to Islam you know, and, his, uh, you know, and part of his argument was that he followed the religion of his forefathers you know, who, were, who were true believers, who are prophets uh, and also where they follow uh, the way of their forefathers uh, who had been mis misguided and started worshipping things that they themselves had created or named without any authority from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and as I mentioned, you know, I spoke speaking about authority, you know, again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives various things authority, uh, but ultimate authority is with Allah. In al illa lillah. So ultimate authority on everything is with Allah, but when He gives authority to something, you cannot deny that. Well, of course, that doesn't mean that we worship those things, but we have to honor and respect, you know, the gifts of Allah uh, to whomever or whatever He gives. And to deny the deny the gifts of Allah is to be ungrateful, which is equal to kufr. So, so he placed this argument before them, and after interpreting their dreams, the one that would be freed. Uh, and would be in the service of the king, he told him, or asked him to tell, uh, tell the king about himself, to tell the king about uh, Yusuf al -Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa says that when he uh, was freed, he forgot. Shaitan made him forget. Uh, and so in this way, Yusuf al -Islam spends years in prison. But during this time, of course, he remembers his Lord, and he also invites the people toward Allah. Uh, and so uh, he spends his time in the service of his Lord. And then eventually the king, he sees a dream you know, in which he sees you know, seven lean cows eating or devouring seven fat ones. And he sees seven green stalks and then he sees seven or, or spikes and then he sees seven dry ones. And he wants to know the interpretation and he asks his advisors and all of them say, oh, you know, this is just some type of false dream. You're just, you know, thinking about something or whatever. And at that moment, you know, the cupbearer, the prisoner who had been freed, you know, who, who Yusuf al-Islam had asked to tell the king about him, he remembers suddenly, you know, he remembers Yusuf al-Islam and he says to the king, he says that if you let me go forth, if you let me go uh, and meet this man, then I will tell you the interpretation because he will tell me the interpretation and so the king sends him forward and he comes running to Yusuf al -Islam. and he tells the dream to Yusuf al -Islam. and Yusuf al -Islam, he tells him you know, he says that you know there will be seven years of good harvest followed by seven dry ones or seven years of very lean uh, means or uh, meager means in which you will live off of what you harvested, harvested the first seven years you know uh, and then you know so what you have stored you know then you can live off of that 
uh, and then uh, that will be followed by one year and those seven first seven years and then another seven years so 14 years total and then that will be followed by a year of rain abundant rain in which you will press you know and uh, the inference here is pressing the grapes and the, and the olives uh, and so he comes and he tells the king and the king says to bring this man to me you know and I will make him you know uh, I will place him in my own service meaning you know he will be uh, exclusive for the king uh, and then uh, uh, and so this would be a very high position uh, like chief advisor or chief uh, 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 cabinet member and so you know so when the pe when the man comes to Yusuf al-Islam asking him to come and join the king Yusuf al-Islam doesn't say oh yeah let me get out of this place you know so he says, ask the king to find out the condition of the women who cut their hands. You know, before I'm leaving this place, I want to know what their condition is. And you also, you have to remember here, you know, time has passed here. You know, it's been some time. And so the truth gets mixed with falsehood. Uh, and people put different spins on uh, what they want the people to believe. And so, of course, you know, for, for the ministers who were the husbands of these wives this was a blemish on their uh, position you know that their wives are running after this this slave boy and so uh, you know over time the truth gets kind of skewed uh, and so uh, you know and, and Yusuf al-Islam of course understood this and he wanted to make sure that his name was clear and he also wanted to make sure that he wasn't walking into the same situation you know, and so, so the king, he asked the women, he says, what do you say about Yusuf? And they all, they say that, uh, you know, uh, Allah forbid, you know, we know nothing except good. You know, he has, there's no evil in him. There's nothing but good in him. You know, and the Aziz, or the wife of the Aziz, Zulekha, you know, she says that I truly tried to seduce him. And yet he refused my seduction. And she goes on, and then eventually the famous statement in uh, in the Quran, or one of the famous, many famous statements, but one of the famous statements in the Quran, you know, where it says, "Wa ma nafsi inna nafsa la amaratun bissu'i illa ma rahma Rabbi, inna Rabbi ghafur rahim." Wa ma ubarwa nafsi that uh, uh, I do not absolve my own nafs, you know. But the nafs is, is uh, it, it takes you toward the evil. Yeah. Except for the one, illa ma rahima rabbi. Except for, for the one who the, Allah has, has mercy upon. Uh, and Allah is forgiving and merciful. Or, or uh, inna rabbi ghafuru rahim, you know, he is merciful and forgiving. And so, uh, so after this, then you know Yusuf al-Islam is brought out of jail and he's made the advisor, chief advisor to the king. Uh, and the king, you know, when he says that I'm going to make give you this position, Yusuf al-Islam says, "Make me in charge of the storage houses. You know, where are you going to store store your grain and your goods? Make me in charge of that because I will be a knowing guardian. You know, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given him the knowledge and he's going to know how to deal with everything." Uh, because Yusuf al-Islam also understood and he told them that the, this drought and this famine wasn't simply going to involve Egypt itself but all of the surrounding land and countries. So even Canaan would be involved in all the other areas. So you're going to have, you know, so if you have stores uh, and, you know, the, and if you have plenty of stores then, you know, people from even these places are going to be coming and asking for things. And so, as the king, or as Yusuf al-Islam asked the king, the king makes him in charge of all the storage houses, and basically he makes him in charge of this whole affair, how to deal with, with this coming famine and drought. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we will see that in essence, Yusuf al-Islam's position becomes more important than even the king. You know, because the way to the man, man's heart is through his stomach. You know, if you can feed the people, then they're going to be uh, thankful to you. 
you know, if you can't feed the people, then, you know, they don't really care about you. Which is also an interesting point, you know, if you see how Islam spread through various parts of the world, and especially when you get to the subcontinent, you know, the only Allah or the friends of Allah who came there to spread Islam, what did they do? They got the langar going, you know. They would call the people and they would feed the people, and then they would talk to the people. Of course, these days we generally we talk to the people first and then we feed them because if we don't, if we if we feed them first, then they won't stay and listen to the talk. So, you know, so but if you see the Sunnah of the Oli Allah, you know, they would invite the people, they would feed the people, and make sure that they're, uh, you know, they're not focused on their stomach and they can focus on what they're what what what's being said. So. Of course, just as Yusuf al-Islam had interpreted the dream, seven years of plenty come. You know, and then after those seven years of plenty, now you get the drought hitting. You know, and, and it doesn't take long for people to run out of what they have. In the meantime, Yusuf al-Islam has you know, filled the storage houses with, with much good, with, you know, with a lot of, uh, with abundant amount of supplies more than even Egypt itself needs. Uh, and so you have people now coming, you know, when they're running out of supplies, the, you know, new, news spreads rapidly that, oh, you know, this, the king in Egypt and his advisor have, have planned for this well ahead and they have all of this ready. So people start coming from far and wide to come and, you know, bar bargain, you know, and buy goods, and especially food store sources. So the same thing is going on in Canaan. You know, Yaqub al-Islam and his sons are there and they're running out of supply, so what do they do? So the sons, they ask their father, you know, look, you know, we're, we don't have anything left or nothing. If we, if we stay like this, you know, we're going to run out of everything very shortly. So allow us to go to Egypt and we will, you know, we will see what we can do. You know, and get take our take what we have with us and see what we can buy. So Yaqub al Islam he gives permission to the older ten boys to go. He keeps Binyabin with himself. Another interesting point to think about here is you know, Yaqub al Islam's in Canaan. Yusuf al Islam is free now. He's a free man in Egypt. You know, and, and the king trusts him so much that if he wanted to, he could he could say to the king that, oh, I want to go to Canaan and you know visit my father. But he does not. You know, you know, and th this gets down get, gets back to bowing to the will of Allah. You know, Yaqub al Islam in the meantime, because of his love for his son Yusuf, al you know, and you know just the 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 pains of the distance. You know, of, the separ of that physical separation. You know, he's cried so much that he's lost his sight. Yaqub al-Islam gives them permission. And again, this is something to think about, and we'll talk about this later, inshallah. But Yaqub al-Islam, he gives these ten permission, and they go. And they come to, to Egypt, and when they come to the storage house to buy goods, you know, Yusuf al-Islam, of course, he recognizes them, but they don't recognize him. You know, and if you think about this, you know, when Yusuf al-Islam left, when they threw him in the well, he was a young boy. He didn't come to the age of maturity until he was in the house of Al-Aziz, you know. And that's where he attained maturity. And now he's, you know, this, in, in, his, in essence, ruler over Egypt. You know, so, you know, his physical features have changed, you know, from that of a young boy to an adult. And his dress has changed, you know, he's, he's gone from wearing, you know, the dress he, or the clothes he used to wear in Canaan, you know, to wearing the dress of the, of the slaves in, in Egypt, and now to basically wearing the dress of the hierarchy of Egypt. And if you think about it, you know, a lot of times, you know, simply somebody changes the cap they're wearing and they're hard to recognize. You know, but, but of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts a curtain over their, their eyes as well, so they don't recognize Yusuf al-Islam. Yusuf al-Islam, again, he recognizes them, he knows who they are. 
they come and they, they buy stuff directly from him. You know, he starts talking, making small talk with them. Oh, you know, where are you from? What are you doing here? You know, how's your father or, or your parents? Are they still alive? How's your father? Do you have any other brothers or sisters? And they tell him, you know, we, you know, we have one younger brother. You know, and our father doesn't let him out of, out of his company. Uh, and so, so as he gives them, you know, the, the grain that they've bought, you know, he tells them now, he says, look, you know, if you want anything else from me, then you have to bring your younger brother. I want to see your younger brother. And if you don't bring him, then I'm not going to sell you anything else. And that's it. And they say, well, I mean, we don't know how we can, uh, we can do this, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. But our father, he doesn't let him out of his company at all. And, and uh, you know, because of what happened to another brother of ours, you know, so we'll see if we can convince him, but, but we're not sure. And as they're leaving, you know, Yusuf al Islam, he directs his men to take all of the merchandise that they had brought and paid, uh, for, uh, paid with to put that back into their goods, but place it in such a position that they won't realize it until they get back to their home. You know, so basically, you know, put it up underneath everything else. So they're not going to pull that out until, you know, all the other stuff that they're going to need for the journey and stuff, they'll pull, they're going to keep on top anyway. And all of the loads of the good and there. So everything else he put underneath there. And so now, you know, they go back and they start talking to their father that, look, you know, we've been denied any further, any further ration unless we take Binyavin or our younger brother with us. You know, and Yaqub al-Islam, he says to them, he says that, you know, I will not do this. And he says, basically, he says that, you know, uh, you, uh, you know, I, I will not do this, uh, or I will not trust him like I trusted Yusuf with you. So don't, you know, think that uh, I'm going to let him go. And then when they start unloading their stuff, you know, they realize that their merchandise is given back to them. And they, they go to their father now and they say, look, you know, I mean, we, uh, you know, this is someone, you know, we, he treated us so well while we were there. And, and now, you know, he's given us all of this stuff for free. But we have that condition, you know, laid upon us that we have to bring our, our younger brother. Otherwise, we won't get anything else. So they lay the argument again, uh, you know, with their father or before their father. And eventually he gives in you know again this is the will of allah and he bows to that will you know, he is you know one of the great prophets of allah and he knows what the will of allah is and he bows himself to that will and so when yaqub al-islam you know he gives them permission now to take their younger brother vinyavin with them of course, you know, they're happy, and, but he also advises them. He says, look, when you go with him, you know, all of you should not enter through the same gate. You know, it's like they say in English, you know, don't uh, put all your eggs in one basket. And he said, you know, everybody enters through a different gate. So if something happens to, you know, one or two of you, then it's not going to happen to all of you. you know, so for your safety. So you enter through different gates, uh, and then you're going to meet up in the city. But he also says, "In al illa you know. But the final uh, authority is with Allah, and I cannot help you against His authority. Uh, so, uh, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He says in the Quran, He says that Yusuf uh, Yaqub al He told his sons this, you know, simply to comfort his own heart, you know, his own self. So, you know. You know, sometimes you have that, that sense of, oh, I, you know, you know what's coming, but okay, I'm just, I'm doing something. So he told his sons, okay, you know, do this, but the final decision is with Allah. You know, and he says, for me is patience. And again, and if you, if you read the verses in the Quran, and, and I'm going to kind of give an overview today and then come back to those 
uh, next time inshallah you know uh, Yaqub al-Islam repeatedly says you know for me is patience for me is patience you know and this is this is my um, this is my my job in all of this is to be patient with the will of Allah hmm. and so when they come now you know, when they enter and they come to Yusuf alayhi salam, and they say, oh, this is our brother. So Yusuf alayhi salam, he takes him to the side and he tells him who he is. And he also tells him, don't worry about what they did to me, you know, before. You know. And so the rest of them, of course, they don't recognize him. They don't know who he is. And, you know, so he places you know when they when they buy the goods and stuff so this time you know when when they buy all of the goods and you know he's given them a lot of grain and and uh, stuff to take back to with them to Canaan you know, as they're getting ready to leave you know one of the callers one of the king's men he comes out and he says oh you thieves you know you've stolen from the king from uh, from the Aziz, you know, and from the king, and they say, "What? You know, we we aren't thieves. I mean, you know, you know, we've we've been good. We didn't come here to create any trouble. You know, and you've been so good to us. Why would we do this?" So Yusuf, I mean, he asked them. He says, "What is the punishment for a thief?" And he knows what the punishment is among them. And they say, "Well, the punishment for the thief is the thief himself. So whoever stole from." Uh, whoever steals in, in their land, whoever steals, he becomes an endangered servant or a servant to the one that he steals from. And so Yusuf Rasam says, fine, then that, that will be the punishment. We will agree upon this. You know, and he has his men go through their belongings. They start with the one before Bin Yavin, and they go through the belongings, nothing comes out, and then they open up the belongings of Bin Yavin, and suddenly the cups comes out. Yeah. Golden cup, measuring cup of the king. And so they say, ah, oh, you know, and they say, we don't know anything about the brothers of Yusuf. They say, we don't know anything about this. You know, he had a brother who did, you know, who also, you know, he stole like this. And what they were talking about was a brother who stole the love of their father. Hmm. You know, but then they start, you know, they start bargaining or trying to barter with him, saying that, look, you know, take one of us, you know, instead of him, because if, if he stays behind, you know, our father, he's lost his sight, just crying for his old, for his brother Yusuf, you know, we don't know what will happen to him now, you know, if, if you keep Bin Yavin and, and he's separated from him, I mean, who knows what will happen to him. So Yusuf al-Islam says, ah, you know, I can't do that, you know. Allah forbid that I do something like that. That would be unjust. But the interesting thing here is here that Yusuf al-Islam has already uh, done this. If you look at it from a worldly standpoint, this this treacherous act, astaghfirullah, which is not treacherous, because Allah subhanahu wa taala says, you know, again, if I look at it from a worldly standpoint, you know, Yusuf al-Islam is accusing them, you know, wrongfully after planting the evidence upon them. And yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran when he talks about this, he says, وَكَذَلِكَ كِدْنَا Yusuf That I'm the one who taught Yusuf this. Yeah. Yeah. So the actions of the Prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes upon himself. He says, I'm the one who taught Yusuf. So Yusuf did this in the, under the instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, under the, the guidance and the, and the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now you can't say anything. You can say, oh, why did Yusuf do this? Well, you know, if we question the action of Yusuf al-Islam, then we're questioning the action of Allah, because Allah is the one who's told him to do this. Yeah. And so, you know, they start saying, okay, look, take one of us. If you take one of us, you know, we'll, we'll take his place, you know, everything's fine. And Yusuf says, Yusuf al-Islam says, no, you know, I'm not going to do that, you know. He's the one who took this, and he's the one who will stay with me, and he will be my servant. And so, you know, after they realize that, well, you know, we're not going to get anywhere with this, 
uh, he's not going to agree to to taking one of us in place of the Yavin. So now they go to the side and start talking amongst each other as to what do they do. And the oldest of them, you know, who is also the one who said, let's not kill Yusuf, let's just throw him in the well. So this one is the one he says that, look, you know, I'm not going back. You know, I'm going to stay here, you know, until, you know, until, you know, Allah decides, you know, what our fate is because, you know, we cannot, I cannot go back and face my father and tell him, look, you know, we, we uh, lost your trust again. You know, you trusted us first with Yusuf and, you know, we lost that trust. And now you trusted it was trusted us with bin Yabin and again the same thing we've lost that trust so he stays in the city the other nine they go back you know, and, and uh, they go back to their father and, and to instruct and to uh, of course you know bin Yabin is with his brother who he knows is his brother uh, and, and is very comfortable here uh, and you know when the uh, uh, when these go, then you know they come to Yaqub al Islam and they start telling him, you know that look, you know he he stole, uh, and uh, you know you can ask anybody in the caravan or you could ask anybody in Egypt, you know, but we had no control over this and we don't know what happened, but you know this is what we know. And again, you know, again you look at the statement of uh, Yaqub al Islam. You know, and you know, he says, you know, that this is something that you yourself have conjured up. You know, and again, for me, is patience. Uh, and we look at the patience uh, every time. You know, he's going through all of this. You know, and, and it's one thing to be patient without knowing. You know, and it's another thing to be patient with the knowledge. And so, Yaqub al Islam is patient with the knowledge. Uh, and uh, inshallah we'll cover this and start uh, you know I want to go over those verses kind of specifically where Yaqub al-Islam is talking about for me is patience uh, and so we'll cover that next time uh, and we'll also get into uh, you know inshallah we'll see if I can wrap things up on on this on the story of Yusuf al-Islam by, by next time if not then the following time uh, but may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to understand the, the lessons from this and to, uh, uh, to understand how all of these lessons are pointing toward his beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa ala Muhammad wa ala ala salli ala sayyidina wa ala Muhammad wa ala sallallahu alayhi wa Ya Allah, guide us to the straight path and fill our hearts with your love and the true love of your beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is true Iman. And with the love of his of the household of Rasulullah and his companions and all of those whom you love. Uh, and uh, uh, protect those who are being oppressed throughout the world and, and, and allow them to uh, have an upper hand above their oppressors. Uh, and protect us from the fitna of the jal that we are living in, and protect us and our families and our and, and our friends and relatives and all of those who uh, who are from the ummah of Rasulullah uh, and uh, allow the eyes of our hearts to open up and see the reality of all of the situation, uh, and uh, allow us again to learn from these lessons and to take what is good uh, and to apply it and to stay away from uh, from whatever is said incorrectly. Uh, and forgive us for our faults and, and, and our shortcomings. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayra khalqihi Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in wa rahmatihi ya 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 rahmat